Holy Spirit, all God's people say, Amen. Father, we love angels, and some of them love us, and some of them don't. The ones that don't love us, they're called demons. And the ones that do love us, they're your holy angels. In all shapes and sizes, and all powers that you've granted them. Thank you that angels are watching over us. So bring us to these segments of the angels, and as we, as we walk in the power of your spirit, Lord, help us to understand, greet, salute. Angels are walking among people tonight. Glory to Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all God's people say, Amen. All right, everybody with me? Yes. All right, anybody like Isaiah? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sister Marie, what does Isaiah mean? Oh, what's Isaiah? Something with God. Something with God. Very good, Sister Marie. What is Oh, oh, is that what it is? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ali. All right, I, I'm giving you a final soon, and you will get your, your first report card. I'm sleeping. Amen. Now, this is a time going back to the 8th century BC. So what's this, is, this is a time of a mighty outpouring of angels. Amen? Amen. Amen. So they left UPS, and then they did this. <laughs> now, the angels came. And they were going to, um, the reason why our army is so powerful, we're called under the Lord Sabaoth. Mm -hmm. Now we're going back to the time of Isaiah. Who wrote Isaiah? Isaiah. <laughs> Isaiah. You're very smart. <laughs> now, this is the 8th century BC. Yep. It's toward the end of the 8th century BC, around 720 BC. There's going to be an incident that happened in 721, 722. Does anybody remember that incident? In 721, 722 BC, which has never recovered since today, the Jewish people lost nine and a half tribes of Israel. They have never recovered till today. Still haven't recovered. There's two groups of Jews, what are they called? What are the two tribes? Judah and Benjamin. We call the Jews the Jews because of Judah. You got that? First used in the book of, what's the first book, sister? Esther. Very good. How many ever heard of Esther? Um, they were called Jews for the first time. And sometimes Jews can be a derogatory term. And right now they're, they're having a... Uh, they're walking through Jerusalem, the old city, in a parade to celebrate their um, uh, war that they had in 1967. So it was called the Six Days War. And when they had that war, which is really good to get into it right now, they had unbelievable supernatural help. They had five nations against them. They were outnumbered a gazillion to one. And guess what? They won. When bombs were aimed at the direction, they blew away. When bombs were supposed to go off, they didn't go off. In fact, I was in Tel Aviv. Is Tel Aviv in the Bible, sister? Yes. Um, there was a bomb that went through a building in Tel Aviv. It didn't blow up. And when they discovered it, the bomb was right on top of a Bible. Wow. They saw uh, recently with bombs coming in, they saw them from the Gaza Strip and everything. Literally, people just saw them blowing out into the Mediterranean. Oh, wow. God has his hands on Israel. So now we're going to read a very important thing that happened in 720-21-22. Israel got... Um, smashed in the north and there was a man that came in with his armies and one of the generals was called Tiglath Pileser do not name your grandchildren that name he came into Samaria you ever hear of Samaria yes. anybody go to Ephraim in Israel it was only a few yards away from you did you know that in Samaria what did Jesus do in Samaria, Jesus says, will you marry me? She was working on husband number six. How many know she's been around the block? 
Amen. Amen. So what happens is Samaria, or some will say Samaria, the Japanese uh, twang on it, Samaria got wiped out. So it's the capital of the north. Then there are only a few miles and they proceeded to head toward Yerushalayim. And it didn't look good. When you look at your Bibles and you read the prophets, you always got to find out the prophet's name and then the king who's next to him. And all of a sudden, after all this came back into play, all of Jerusalem was surrounded by the enemy. How many know that's a dress rehearsal to what's going to be coming? In the dress rehearsal, there was a man called Sennacherib. Do not name your grandchildren that. And he was going to surround Jerusalem and take it over. This is what happened. Are you ready? You ready for the angels to come in? Mm -hmm. Now, you're going to read in history, if, you're, if anybody got a computer on you, a very ridiculous account of it. Do it if you like history. Just do it what they said. It's so ridiculous what they say happened. And here's what the Bible says. Who are you going to go with? All right, very good. Now, everybody with me in chapter 36? Mm -hmm. We're going to go through this quickly and so we get to the angels, so we get to the next section. Any questions? Verse 1. In the 14th year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria. Now, who are all the enemies of the Jews? Do everybody know all the enemies? What's the first enemy? Egypt. Very good. Who's the second one? The Assyrians, right. Oh, by the way, if anybody was in Jerusalem today, today, did I say yeah, today? There today. Was, yeah, right. There was, um, how many ever been to the spot where Jesus said, there are a rock upon this rock, I will build my church. Have you been to that spot? A bomb was just Hoisted uh, toward that, so Mount, it's called Mount Hermon there. Yeah. So they were um, Syria just went shoo, sent right now along the border where Irma was dancing with the uh, the little yellow flags, and Peter was using his H, uh, B and H, right when the little flags in the ground. Do you remember that? <laughs> Syria just launched a bomb toward Mount Hermon today. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so and what is this called? Bashan. Assyria. So are they, are they back at it again? Yes. Yes. Old enemies don't die. They come back for another round. They're always, the enemy is always regrouping. Right. You, you getting this? Yes. I mean, just, just you're, you're up to date. It just happened today. So how many are glad you weren't there with a bomb coming right at <laughs> our Peter upon this rock? Then he says, so Sennacherib came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. So everything is, now, who's inside praying? Isaiah, how many would like to have Isaiah praying? And so, this doesn't look good. Turn to the person next to you, this doesn't look good. Now, there's, there's a Bible verse in 2 Chronicles 20. It says, the fighting is the Lord's. Do you remember that? Now, that's very hard for us to relinquish all of our worries and cares and say, you do the fighting. Is, is there anybody that agrees with me? Yes. Do you agree, sister? We don't do the fighting. Don't you do not. Did you ever fight, though? Nah. You well like a rug. <laughs> no. Then the king of Assyria sent up Rav Sheke. Everybody say Rav Sheke. From yes. Meshit to yes. King Hezekiah of Jerusalem with a great army. And he stood by the conduit of the upper pool on the highway to the fullest field. Everybody put a little note there, the fuller field. What happened in the Fuller Field? How many know you were there at the Pool of what? Salah. 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 Yes. Salah. How many know you're all there? Now remember I told you, those are the pools that Isaiah said. In, if you look at Isaiah 7. Okay. Remember Isaiah 7? That's where Mary was born. I told you that, remember? Yeah. How many went in that house where Mary was born? Just to give you a picture, because you like pictures, sister. And Isaiah said at those pools that, Behold, a virgin shall bear a son. Now notice the pools are back here. Wow. So we got an idea right now 
Those who have been to Israel with me. Everybody been to Israel? Yes. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> right there is where Mary was born. Right there. where Peter, can you see this in your own eyes, mind, where we are? Yeah. And so that's where Isaiah said, <clears throat> Behold, a virgin shall bear a son. I gave a teaching on there the last time we were in Israel. Peggy, do you, can you see it right now? I remember the pool is very empty right now, very dry. I would not recommend swimming right now. You would have a bad medical problem if you jumped in the water. Okay. Now, <coughs> and Mary is born right next to it. That's where Jesus did the miracle. What's the 38 years? Remember the 38 in John 4? The 38 means because the children of Israel got stuck in Kadesh Barnea oh, yeah. for 38 years. And that's where the, the town of Emmaus is. And how, how many, so are you, getting the, are you getting all this? And that's where the Ark of the Covenant stayed. And what did they name the church there? Our Lady Ark of the Covenant. Are you getting all this? Are, are you getting the picture now? We were in the room where the Ark of the Covenant was. And that's the Emmaus. Brother Peter. Church in, uh, in Emmaus? Yes. Is the Ark of the Covenant in that church? Yes. Yeah. And around the hill? Yeah. Oh, and, and then you can look straight out and see Jerusalem? Wow. Remember where the ladies were wearing all the scarves? Yes. Yeah. And Irma was still in there, and the yeah. bus was pulling away, and Irma was still in there. By the <laughs> and, and, you know, the Ark of the Covenant was right there. Didn't they tell you that? Well, that was in Abu Ghraib. Um, Abu Ghraib. Yeah. <laughs> that was at the it sounds like a dinner we just had. <laughs> Abu Gumash. Do you remember that? Remember that? Yeah. Okay, so just to give you a picture of what's going on. So when the man says to Jesus, it's 38 years, what is 38? We were stuck there for 38 years. And who's stuck there? The people on the road to Emmaus. Wow. Who are the two people on the road to Emmaus? Number one is Cleopas. Number two, uh, Eastern Christianity believes. Luke. Just for your FYI, okay, it's a lot of background. So if you underline there, verse number two. Verse number three. And there came out of um, to him Eliakim, Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household. Now, what they do is they have like these prime ministers, and Shebna, the secretary, and Yoah, the son of Asaph, the recorder. And Rabbi Shekha said to them, say to Hezekiah. Now, they're sending a delegation because they're going to overcome Jerusalem. They're going to destroy Yerushalayim. Amen? How many of you have ever studied this story before? Wow. I, I think it's new for all of us. And the Rabshake said to him, verse 4, Say to Hezekiah, Thus says the great king of the king of Assyria. What's his name? Sennacherib. Sennacherib. Okay? Say to uh, Do you think that... Uh, on what do you rest the confidence of yours? Now, when you have confidence, it means you know that you walk in the presence of God. First John chapter five verse eleven. You walk in the you walk in the very footsteps of God. How many believe you have that yet in your life? A confidence. Susan did with Padre Pio. Okay, you really walk with him, and then he says, "Do what? Look, look at verse number five. Do you think that mere words are strategy and power for war? On whom do you now rely? Okay, where's your strength? And remember, our strength is the Lord. Here's the most difficult thing for us to do, is to lean on the Lord. I want to take you through some sessions coming up, too, on getting rid of your personal stress. And that's, uh, you're all looking at me, yeah, let's do it. And we'll have a Bible study on stress. How many would like to hear that? Oh, I can't wait to hear yeah. myself. <laughs> okay, good stuff. So underline that, to rely. And on whom do you rely that you have rebelled against me? Behold, you are relying on Egypt. Now, who was their first, who was their first one? Egypt. Now, what did God say when he conquers an area in your life? What does he say? Don't go back to it. And so what were the Jews doing all the time? going back to it. Now who's taking over where they are? Assyria. Who's the next one that's going to be coming in down the pike? You hear Babylon? The Babylonian exile. And so the Jews are always surrounded by an invading army. 
So when they're crying out for the Messiah, this is the time period that they get announced he's coming. And that's why Mary has to be born right next door. Are you getting all this? Yes. Boy, this is, wow. it, this is interesting. <laughs> Such is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who rely on him. Verse 7. But if you say to me, why rely on the Lord our God? Now, probably all of us have been through difficulty in saying, what use is it to rely on God? I prayed and nothing happened. How many have ever been there? I tried, but it didn't result in anything. Have you ever been there? Yes. You see, she yes, prayed and she got healed. That's why she's back tonight. Amen. 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 You're right in my God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But if you say to me, we rely on the Lord our God, is he not whose high places and altars Hezekiah has removed, saying, to Judah and to Jerusalem? Now, the Jewish people were not supposed to have high places. But guess what they did? They kind of copied it, and the name of the high places again would be called the Bamot. We get the word Bema. Now the Bema in your church today was the pulpit. Anybody see a Bema? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the Bemot is, is the high places. So they believed, if we're going to meet God, let's go to a high place. And some of you feel like you've got to go to a high place to meet God. So, what did they do in the time of Judges 7? They built a lot of deities, and they worshipped them. So, Gideon, his name in Hebrew means the champion, woke up one day, the angel, another angel story we got to look at, and he gives them a sledgehammer and says, knock down all the bimot. Knock down all the high places where people worship. There's a prophet called Zephaniah, and in chapter 1, he says, God, when is this all going to end? There's too many deities around here. And what did the people there do? They worshipped God during the day and worshipped the demons at night. So how many know you can't do that? Back with me to Isaiah 36. You shall worship before this altar. Come now, make, make a wager with my master, the king of Assyria. All right, now, where is the king of Assyria? Surrounding Jerusalem. How many people are surrounding Jerusalem at this moment? 138,000 soldiers. You got the picture? How many soldiers are in here? Very few. Just people with their B&H camera. That's all they got. And so they're surrounding here. 138,000. How many think we need some divine help right about now? Okay, so now here they come in. Now, this is kind of interesting, this dialogue. I kind of like this story. You shall worship before this altar, verse 8. Come now, make a wager with my master, the king of Assyria. I will give you 2,000 horses. Now, horses mean what? Power. Power. How many think, you know, when you're thinking of that times, um, it would be like, you know, equivalent to all these guns. But horses is power. Remember Jesus, when he came into Yerushalayim, he rode on a donkey express, Zechariah 9 and 9. If you are able to give you, uh, if you are able to, on your part, to set riders on them, can you give me 2,000 men who can set on them? Now, what do you got inside here? You got inside here a world of religion. So do you see these guys with their big uh, do not hats and everything else and in the temple? Do you think they're ready to hit the horse? And go, do you think they're ready to do that? All right, so this is why this is a very amusing tale here. And that's why, I mean, really, I think we should, when I become Pope, I'm going to add a lot more to the lectionary. So Eileen can read it in her little book and say, what does that mean? How can you repulse a single captain among the least of my master's servants when you rely on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? What happened in their history? What did Egypt do against Israel? What happened to the opening of the sea? Now, after that incident, what did they attempt to do? In the book of Deuteronomy 17, God says to the people, don't rely on Egypt for horses. In other words, when you are free, and God sets you free, don't go back. 
if I'm a raging alcoholic and I'm free, I should not keep beer in my refrigerator. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't go back to where you were. Amen? So I should take all those obstacles away. But here now, they got all these horses in front of them. And so you didn't go to Egypt. We're Assyria. And we're going to bring this to you right now. So how many think temptation looms? Where's Isaiah? Inside the temple. Do you meet Isaiah inside the temple? Yes. He's, he's, how many think you'd do a little extra praying right now? So Isaiah told them all to say the rosary. <laughs> Good power. Okay. Now, then he says to it, look at verse 10. More it is without the Lord that I have come up against this land to destroy it. The Lord said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. So how many here can rely on the power of God? Then Eliakum, Shepna Yoa, said to Rabshakeh, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic, for we understand it. Do not speak to us in the language of Judah within the hearing of the people who are on the wall. So what are the people doing on the wall? They're watching the enemy. What language is speaking up? Now, if you put a big circle there, Aramaic. Where did we get Aramaic from? Jesus. The Jesus. enemy came and said from Assyria, takes over Samaria. We get the good Samaritan. What lingo do they speak? What language does Jesus speak? In Mark chapter 4, there are four references to Aramaic. Talitha kum, Abba, Epatha, Eloi, Eloi, Lava Sabachthana. So this right here, now measured up to this right here, is the reason why Jesus speaks Aramaic. What did they do to nine and one half tribes? Gone. Where did they go? Somebody say, where did they go? Where did they, go? Where did they, go? they were scattered. So that opens the doors to the Gentiles? You got it. They were scattered, and this is called, very good, you're getting an A. I'm going to write a note home to your mother. This is called the diaspora. What happened at Pentecost? You've got to get the diaspora back. So when you read Acts chapter 2, what do you have there? Fifteen nations. Where are they from? They're all scattered. They even come in from the island, sister. Amen? Sister. Sister. They were 38 years where? 38 years in Kadesh Barnea, looking at Jerusalem. Right. Do, you, do you understand the? Do you like all this What's background? It's the symbolism of thirty-eight years of Kadesh Barnea and one hundred and thirty-eight thousand trying to destroy them. Hello. Give me a break. All right. Where do you want the break? She wants a break over here. All right. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? That's hundred to one. That's right. No, more than that. More than that. Thousands more. Whatever. Yes. Now you're getting there. So uh, hundred times uh, uh, times one thirty-eight is thirteen. One hundred thirty-eight thousand. Yes. Very good. I'm glad you're getting this. Brother Peter, you seeing all the connections? Yeah. You see why Jesus spoke Aramaic? Why did Jesus speak Aramaic? May I make a new suggestion to get the nine and a half back? Now, when Pentecost Sunday came and the Holy Spirit fell, in Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, we are told, I'm going to Jerusalem and Samaria. Verse what? Acts 1.8. Then I'm going to Samaria, because why is he going to Samaria? He has yeah. to get the nine and a half tribes back. Wow. And who's the first one who takes her? It's the Samaritan woman with six men. Can you imagine? Wow. She came in from Hollywood. Or Bollywood, <laughs> whatever they, whatever they are going to come in. All right? Okay. So they, they, they came in, and so that's why Jesus is... Jesus is after the woman because in 2 Kings 17, how many deities did they worship? Five. That's the meaning of the five husbands. So if you read 2 Kings 17, 
you could read all the Samaritan woman's husband's names. Wow. Sister. I was thinking it was day six with the six the husbands, you know, and, and the woman and the sin, and he's pulling them back. He's recreating. We, now, what do we need? Yes, we do. We need angelic help right now. Amen. Are you getting this? You enjoying the background? Yes. Now, verse 11, these men, Eliakum, Sebna, and Yoa, these are the kind of the main leaders, right? Yes. Now, they're looking on the wall, verse 12, and Rav Shekin said, has my master sent... To speak these words to your master. Who's, who's, the, who's the master over here? Hezekiah. So Sinatra wants to talk to Hezekiah. Do you want 2,000 horses? No. Hmm. Verse 13. Then Rabshika stood out and called out in a loud voice in the language of Judah. What would that be? Hebrew. Right. Hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, do not let Hezekiah deceive you. He will not be able to deliver you. Now, the greatest attack, remember we've been talking about demon spirits. Demon spirits say they can't deliver you. Now, if you underline the word deliverance, we hear a lot of people doing deliverance ministry. I like that name, but I don't like it. Deliverance deals with outside forces. Salvation deals with inside help. So let me ask us a question. As you would say, I'm under attack. Oh, welcome to life, sister. <laughs> you're 75 and you're going to keep on I going. I am not 75. And Larynx <laughs> keeps going. And else. So now, oh, it could be older than I am. You, you look, well, the gray is showing now. It is not. And <laughs> so what happens then it's is sure, really. deliverance is here. Your gray is showing. No, this is, wait, no, this is. <laughs> This is all this. Oh, that's Salvation <laughs> is here. So are you delivered or are you saved? Saved. saved? Today I was in a funeral parlor. One guy said, Father of hell! I said, Whoa! <laughs> and uh, the deceased died at 45. Oh, that's and they had a flower arrangement like this. I said, could you tell me what that means? Because he couldn't answer it in his last months of life. So he'd always go. So at the end, I said, everybody, let's do the symbol. So everybody in the funeral parlor went. Okay. These are the things you never forget awake from, you know? And so the guy in the back says, that's Father Bill. And he says, because of him, I got delivered. Amen. Awesome. Praise God. Yes. And you know what his name was? Brother Peter. <laughs> and you know what he said? Yeah. And he says, You always called me Brother Peter. Brother Peter. <laughs> right now, so can can the enemy deliver you? Can can your force deliver? Now, what are we going through in everything in life is a deliverance. But you need salvation. Salvation belongs to our God. Revelation chapter twelve, verse eleven and twelve. Are you getting this? Is this good stuff? Yes. All right. I don't know if we'll get off this. Now, underline verse 14. Do not let Hezekiah make you rely on the Lord. Now, if I say to you, and you're having problems, let's rely on the Lord. And people that are unbelievers say, the Lord. Can you just see them now? The Lord. So here we are. They're lined up. They're watching the whole city being surrounded. Sinatra wants to talk. So this little delegation is going for it. <coughs> Speaking... Speak in Hebrew because these guys on the wall don't understand Aramaic because Aramaic just happened a little while ago. And now this is why Jesus speaks it. And when Jesus, by the way, just for your FYI, when our blessed Lord walked the earth, he spoke cosmopolitan. What does that mean? A little bit of this and a little bit of this. Like how many ever went to Italy and you speak a little bit of this? Go tuta tuta tuta, and then you go stop your cheap, stop your cheap, and, and you just kind, of, you just combine everything. Amen. Okay, so it, it's kind of a, 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 a cosmopolitan. It sounds like a magazine, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> Underline that the Lord will surely deliver us. This city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Okay, now, what are the odds? One hundred and thirty-eight thousand. Right. 
this doesn't look good. Now, do not get, listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, make your peace with me. Come out. Come out wherever you are. Then every one of you will eat of his own vine. Everybody underline that. Oh, wow. Somebody say, wow. Wow. Now, what does it mean to eat of your own vine? What did Jesus do? I am the vine. Now watch this. You're getting it, sister. You are the branches. You're getting it again. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that. <laughs> oh, I like it. That's another time. <laughs> you're, you're, you're good, but it doesn't mean that. All right, go ahead. All right, now, when he says the vine there, you've got to okay. sit under your vine because the vine is the whole idea of waiting for Messiah. Now, interestingly, how I many know you're getting good stuff? Interestingly, right now, there's another man walking around at this time. His name is Mika. In chapter 4, verse 4, he says, You're sitting under your vine. What does it mean to sit under the vine? It means I could be at peace thinking about God. And when I'm at peace sitting about God, I have my Torah open. And when I read my Torah, I find Messiah is coming. Now, when you walk the path to Cana, and Deacon's going to have the door open for me next time I go by, there's a little tiny path going into Cana. And there's a little tiny house right there. And my B&H camera took the picture. <laughs> I'll show them to you tonight in Duncan. Now, as Jesus is walking and they're going by, he stops over here in John 1, and he says to Nathaniel Bartholomew, you know what Jesus says? This is Luke's Greek. I see you sitting under a vine. And I, when you're sitting under the vine, because you're waiting for me. And all of a sudden, he's reading the Torah. He's reading the passage where Jesus is going to come. And there he is. <laughs> I guess that's confirmed. And then, then what happens is he gets up and they all walk to the wedding feast of Cana. And who was in the crowd? Mama Mary. And so they're walking together in the crowd going to the wedding feast because the wedding feast took eight days. And so when you get to John chapter 2, what day are they on? They're ready for the multiplication of the wine. Now, it's not that the best is served last. It's the best is to give out the greatest because the last shall be first. first. And the best is the quality that God has for you which is ever-ending. So now, what's the vine? The vine is waiting for Messiah to come. So now, what are we going to see right now? The angel's coming. Okay? The mulak. The great angel is coming. Are you getting this? This is getting you excited? Amen? Amen. Have we ever heard a Bible story like this? No. <laughs> So please underline there. I've never seen that before. Make your peace with me and come out to me. And then every one of you eat of his own vine and everyone under the fig tree. Wow. Now, what does the fig tree represent? Israel. Right. And what, did, what were our first parents covered with in the garden? Figs. 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 They realized they were a room. There's a room and then there's a room. One means nakedness, the other means subtle, like the enemy is. Genesis 24, 224, Genesis 3, 1. Okay, so one is naked, and then the enemy is subtle, and which means a lot of deception. How many of the enemy loves to deceive us? How many have ever been deceived before? Everybody shake your head, yes. So now, we, we got a lot of information here, huh? This is a lot to take in. Even Sister Marie has to do a little um, 
And then he says, then every one of you will eat of his own vine, every one of you um, drink the water of his own cistern. Now, what does it mean to drink your own water? Literally, it means to drink your water. But it means that when God comes, he fills you with life. In the prophet Jeremiah chapter 2, when people disobeyed God, their cisterns ran dry. Now, what's underneath Jerusalem right now? The river. Who built the river? Who built the one under what? Hezekiah. Now, what's going on in Jerusalem? It's the middle of nowhere. So now, you're going to be under your vine. Under your vine. Under your fig tree. Where did Jesus encounter the fig tree that he said, Cursed be you? In Bethphage, when he picked up the donkey. Some of you have seen Beth Page for the first time ever. And my B&H camera was flicking all over the place. B&H was sh showing everything. When Jesus started walking along there, that's the spot he saw the fig tree and said, cursed her. It's the very spot that the Jews on the Sabbath day could not walk beyond that. So, when Jesus is coming in, you like all this stuff, sister. There was a, uh, an Acts 1. When the Sabbath came, you could only go so far and you walk. Mm -hmm. Guess what spot you could walk to? Only to the fig tree. Mm -hmm. And what did Jesus do when he's coming on Donkey Express? Cursed are you, you fig tree! Because it represented Israel. Mm -hmm. And it represented the hardness of religion. Yeah. Sister. Okay, that's what you're saying. Go ahead. Are you getting this? Yeah. Now, he says to us there, Beware of Hezekiah, um, um, verse 17. And I come and take you away your land like your own land, a land of grain and wine, a land of bread and vineyards. Beware lest Hezekiah um, mis mislead you by saying the Lord will deliver us. What is he saying? Listen, people. I'm your deliverer. Don't listen to somebody who believes in God. Don't listen to somebody who's going to pump a Bible in front of you. Give it up, because I'm going to tell you, you're going to get all this. You're going to sit under your fig tree, but what was he saying? You'll see Messiah. No, he wasn't going for Messiah. No. But guess what happened? The, the, what does the vines mean? The vines means from Psalm 80, because what, why would you stand on top of a wall? You would stand on top of a wall to watch the vines. Because the enemy would come in and take away your drinking power. They didn't have Coca-Cola. Diet with lemon. They would have vines. So we got to need these guys. And who are the guys in position to stand on the wall? You got their names right there. Who are they? Eliekom, Sebna, and Yoa. And I, it says Joah, I know, but you, the, the Hebrew is Yoa. And what does Yoah mean? God is God, right? Mm -hmm. Sister. I'm still... How did they know all the beliefs and every understanding and then use it toward them as their own power? You, you because you, you got to understand, there is a fight going on. Right. And here's the fight for the rest of How everybody's life. Here's the fight. you got to know what people believe. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the fight. Okay. There are five gods, 2 Kings 17. Okay. 2 Kings 17 for the one God. So what are they saying? Our five gods are beating you up because you're surrounded. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of this, he gets a word from God. Has he? Yeah? You're going to die. No. And he goes ash and white to I. And says, I... I don't want to die. Pray to God. And then what happens? The shadows go back, what, 15? You get 15 more years. Wow. You ready to go on? Is this good? Good. Has any of the gods of the nations delivered this land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? 
Now remember, everything you go through is the gods versus God. The people that you talk to, they have other gods. Did you know that yet? It's their gods versus God. I have a Hindu pharmacist. He brings up Jesus. I say, it's the way, truth, and life. He says, how about mine? I said, they're not gods. They're false gods. I said, they are darkness. He still likes me. <laughs> <laughs> and he gives me a discount on my blood pressure. So I, I, I said, they're not gods. I said, it's only Jesus. He says, how do you know that? I said, the word of God says so. He said, not some other book. And he looks at me. So I'm always battling the gods, amen? Yeah. amen? Even if you have a daughter called Melissa, you're always battling the gods. <laughs> amen? Are you getting this? So what did he have to know? He has to know their name of the gods. And what did he just do? Why does he think now? Because they just took over Samaria or Samaria, the Japanese flavor. So if I just took over and defeated your god, I've got to know something about that. Remember that nine and a half tribes are gone. They have never returned to this very day. And how are they going to return? Romans 9. They're going to return when the gospel is preached to every nation. Right now in France, the Jews are being warned, get out of France as soon as possible. Wow. And if you are following the news today, yesterday, they're telling Jews, stop wearing your, it's called kippah. Yeah. Stop wearing your kippah in public. Today, somebody just went up to somebody's the back of the head and went, wham! Today, in Germany. So, the handwriting is on the wall in Germany. Get out of Germany. Again. Get out of France. Again. Because it's all building up the same exact way. The same thing that, that happened before Hitler came in. It's the same thing happening again right now. So the Jews are getting a warning. Get out. Amen? Because the world hates Jews. Because Deuteronomy 7 says they're so peculiar. And when you look at them, they say, these people are nuts. Look how they dress. And the curls over their head. Amen? Has any of the gods, underline that verse number 18, the nations deliver this hand of the God of... Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sarver? Underline that. Those are the gods of the Samaritan woman. See them right there? When Jesus says you have five, there's the five. You see them all popping in? Where are all these deities? And they have they, did, have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who among all the gods of these countries have delivered their countries out of my hand? What is he saying? I'm powerful. Then he says that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand. You are surrounded. Amen. It doesn't look good. All right, you ready for the angels to come in? Yes. yes. As, but they were silent. Look at verse 21. And he answered them, not a word, for the king's command was, do not answer him. Then Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, Shebna, the secretary, Yoah, the son of Asaph, <coughs> the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn. What does it mean? He's right. And so what did, what did they do? Went like this. What does that mean? We're powerless. Somebody help us. Angels. Angels. Okay. So this is getting really scary now. I don't know what to tell you. Are you getting this? Yeah. Then Hezekiah heard it. He tore his clothes. Chapter 37, verse 1. Covered himself with sackcloth. We better repent. Help. 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 And he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, and Shemna, the secretary, and all the senior priests. And by the way, uh, you should also put in there Isaiah 22, because that's where the church gets the belief that our Peter upon this rock, I'll build my church. And these guys were involved in it, by the way. Then they said to him, are, are you with me? Um, to the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amaz, I, she was from Middletown, but this is another one, Isaiah, Thus says Isaac, has, uh, they said to him, the day is, this is the day of distress. That's why I should do a little, a lot of teaching on distress. Of rebuke, of disgrace. Children have come forth to birth and no strength to bring them forth. The woman didn't want to push them out. How many know back then they would say, push honey, push. And the women said, why should I push them out when they're going to face all this? 
What did Jesus warn us on the last days about the babes? He says, you better not be pregnant in those days. It's going to be that bad that you have no life. My great niece's godfather, we were just talking after I beautifully baptized her. <laughs> and we both agreed, and I'm saying, yeah. I, don't, I said, and he said, I don't think she'll ever be a grandmother. Because we're going to be seeing Christ soon. This world is nuts. Just a unbiased remark. And then he says there, we're in a, underline there, the day of distress. Children have come forth, no strength to let them out, right? Yeah. Verse 4. It may be that the Lord your God heard the words of Rabshakeh, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to mock the living God. Galatians 6 says, there's no mocking of God. And will rebuke the words which the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, lift up the prayer. All right, now, who do you got to pray for? This is it. Who are we praying for? The remnant. How do you say the remnant? The few. How do you say the few? Remember we gave you that word a hundred times. The Sharif. The Sharif. We've got to pray for the Sharif. This is really scary. When the servants of Hezekiah came, verse 5, to Isaiah, Isaiah, say to your master, Thus says the Lord, yes, do not be afraid because of the words you have heard. Now, you, here's what you got to do. How many believe in God on a good day? Anybody here? Here's, here's an object lesson. Don't ever let a non-believer's words rattle you. Have they ever done that before? Yes. You have God. Every time you let a non-believer's words rattle you, you have listened to the devil. Anybody been there before you listen to a non-believer's words rattle you? So don't listen to those phone calls. If you don't give me your social security number tonight, this is the IRS. They don't call that way. I'm, I'm sending the FBI to you, sir. I got your phone number. All right, everybody got that object lesson? Yes. <coughs> I mean, never. Turn to the person next to you and say, never means never. Never means never. <coughs> You've ever been rattled? Yes. All right, underline there verse, verse, do not be afraid because the words you have heard, which the servants of the king of Assyria have reviled me. Behold, I will put his spirit in so that he will hear a rumor and return to his own land. <coughs> God says to the prophet Isaiah, now we're used to Isaiah prophecies, but God says, I am going to deal with humanity's deception upon you. Now, in the last hour, 2 Thessalonians 2, there's going to be such a spirit of deception on the people of God, they're going to believe the deception. <coughs> I believe one of the greatest frights that you could ever have in these days that are coming ahead is people are going to be deluded and live under the delusions and the fears. Amen? You know, I think we should be praying a little bit because our, our midsection of the country is being destroyed. Yes. And not one bishop has said anything yet. No. And people are losing their homes, their livelihood, and uh, bugs and diseases and snakes and, and everything else. <laughs> are, are you getting this? Yes. Behold, uh, underline there. So, how do I say spirit? Sister Marie. I will put a ruah in them. Right. I will send such a spirit upon them. That's right. I will send such a spirit upon them. They cannot deal with the spirit that I will send. Now, what happened in Egypt when they're coming through the Yom Su? The same thing. Okay, good stuff. Uh, and return to his own land. So, where they got to go back after this? Now, I, I, are you ready? We'll, we'll do Hezekiah's prayer. And then we're going to flip to the, the end of the story. Amen. Amen. Is this good or what? Wow. You ever hear this story, sister? No. What have you been doing? Looking at my Larry for your whole life. What are you doing? Uh -huh. <laughs> good, good. And then uh, I will make him fall by the sword in his own land. Yeah. So what's going to happen to Assyria? Here comes, put a little note in there, the prophecy of the fall. Every time they come against a believer wow. and say words against you, they're prophesying their own fall. Remember what, what the Bible says is there, 
Don't let anybody set a trap for you to fall in. When they set up a trap, they fall at themselves. All right, now, here's what I want us to do for the rest of our lives. I'm giving this homework. When somebody speaks to you, consider the source of who they are. Only listen to Born Again Bible believing Evangelical Spirit filled New Testament Catholic Christ Church and Eleven. Listen to people who love the Lord. Amen. 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 They didn't know this, but Deacon Tim is going to be the new star in the new Moses movie. <laughs> <laughs> they want him to go and say, let my people go. And the, the, all of Israel is going to split in half. Wait till you see this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't have told you the secret. Anyway. <laughs> Verse 8. Then Rapsacre returned and found the king of Assyria fighting against Libna. For he heard that the king had left Lakshya. So all of a sudden, he's coming in and wars breaking out around him. Amen? Yeah. Now the king heard concerning Tehirkaha, king of Ethiopia. So, I mean, all these things that Isaiah is saying, confusion's coming in. He was set out to fight against you. When he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah. Thus, as you speak, the king of Judah, do not let your God on whom you rely deceive you by promising Jerusalem will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. You are going to lose Jerusalem. You believe in an invisible God. I believe in all these gods. You just had them circled there. The five, the Samaritan woman doll, remember her? Yeah. She had them. This is why they speak Aramaic. <laughs> now, you are going to lose Jerusalem because you believe in some invisible God. He's invisible. Who, can, who the heck can see him? <laughs> Meanwhile, all around him, all these little wars are breaking out, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. to, to turn his attention. And he says, we're coming in, we're going to get you. But you better rely on us, and you better surrender and take in our gods. Yeah. So how many things, there's a lot of delusion going on there. Yeah. And right now, your families are filled with delusion. Yeah. And they think you're delusionary because you say, I love the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, look at, have the gods, now under, underline this, verse 11. But you have heard that the king of Assyria had done all to the lands, by destroying them utterly. Oh, he's powerful. And shall you be delivered? Your God doesn't work. Forget about him. And have the gods of the nations deliver them. The nations which my fathers destroyed. Gozan, Haran, Reseth, and the people of Eden, and Telazar. The, the, we got strength here. Where is the king of Hamath, the king of Arpad, the Sarafafaim, the king of Hena, the king of Eva? <laughs> You know why I'm laughing? Because you don't know if I'm pronouncing them right no, either. No, we don't know. <laughs> Amen? So we got the power. We got the power. Amen? And now we're ready to go to... And then, then Hezekiah says, um, um, Guys, um, we're in trouble right now. We think we better pray. Okay, let's pray. Hezekiah received a letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord. What's the house of the Lord? Everybody circle that and say what? The temple. The temple. The temple. Everybody see the temple? The Bayit. And he spread it before the Lord. You know what I love doing? Spreading things before the Lord. Amen. Who's the first spreader before the Lord? Probably a man called Gideon and the fleece. In Judges 6, oh. Judges 7, Judges 8. Spread things before the Lord. Amen. You got a bill? Say, Lord, pay it. <laughs> Amen? Wow. Spread things before the Lord. So Hezekiah is uh, a good prayer over there. And then watch this. Watch, oh, we're, we're, and then we're, then we're going to jump to, uh, in a minute, we're going to jump to the, uh, we're going to jump to the angels. Hezekiah received the letter, look at verse 15. Pray to the Lord, O Lord of hosts, Sabaoth, help! I told you that's my favorite prayer. Mm -hmm. God of Israel, who are enthroned above the cherubim. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody underline that, mercy. You are the God. You alone are. Does everybody know that on Sundays, when we pray the prayers of our church, do you know every Sunday i got to say what is called the Te Deo? Does everybody know what that prayer is? Well, what are you doing with your life? Getting sick? The Te Deum. Everybody say Te Deum. Te Deum. Te Deum means to you, God. Now, what does it mean when you say the Te Deum? You are God. You are you are born of the virgin. You, you, you. And I, I was just praying it this morning. I kept going. You, 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 you. you. <laughs> okay, you, 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 God. Amen? Amen. So that's called te, you, deo, okay. to God. You, God, you, God, you, God. Okay, everybody say you, God. You, God. Right now, 
Uh, you are the God, you alone. Now, put in there, he's doing a te deum. Right. Uh, all the kings of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear. Now, incline your ear means, listen to me. Take your hand and do this. How many have ever seen this? Yeah. Incline your ear. you got to bend it in, right? And so he's saying, okay, God, let's do the, this prayer. Hear all the words of the Sennacherib who has been mocking you. God, you're being mocked. Of a truth, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations in the land. They did a pretty good job. We're all knocked out right about now. And have cast their gods into the fire. Okay, remember their gods? The Samaritan women's gods? And they were no gods but the work of men's hands. They're just, we make them. Wood and stone, they were destroyed. So now, O Lord, our God, save us! From, how do you say that? Hosanna! Hosanna. 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 Right. That all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are alone. And finally Isaiah comes in there, verse 21. The son of Amoz sent to Hezekiah. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, because you have prayed to me concerning the Sinatra king of Assyria, this is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning. Okay, so uh, concerning him, verse 22. She despises you, she scorns you, the virgin daughter of Zion. She wags her head behind you, the daughter of Jerusalem. So what are they doing? They're sticking their tongues at Jerusalem? Whom have you mocked, you, 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 uh, you deceiver? Against whom you have raised your voice and wholly lifted your eyes. Against the Holy One of Israel. Remember when the devils encountered Jesus. I know who you are. The Holy One of Israel. Here's a new insight for you. They had the spirit of delusion. And when Jesus entered, they knew they couldn't de deceive him. Wow. And let me tell you, precious people. You're not going to want to hear this. Deception is upstairs in the church. Okay, amen. amen. Watch out for the deception. Do I hear amen? Amen. I, but your servants, you have mocked the Lord. Verse 24. You have said, with my chariots, I have gone up to the heights of the mountains, to the far recesses of Lebanon. There's a Lebanon one. Mm. Charbel, where are you? Well, we're in Lebanon now. Mm. I felled its tallest trees, its choicest cypress. I came to its remotest height. I dug wells, drank water. And I dried up the sole of my foot, all the streams of Egypt. Okay, that's the prayer. Now let's go to the angel as we begin to wrap up here. My time is up. What? Almost. Wow. You ready to go to the angel? Yes. Mm -hmm. So they're calling out. Isaiah, let's follow what just happened. Hezekiah prays. He takes on the threat of the people. Now... Remember I told you a million times about the threat. Don't ever let anybody threaten you. Take Acts 4.29. Acts 4.29 is the prayer when you feel threatened by somebody. Or an activity. Or say you were sick. Or say you're rolling over in bed and Father Bill wants to know where the heck you are. Staring at Larry. Acts 4.29. Okay. That's the prayer of threat. Now we've been through that a lot of times. Amen? Amen. Now, let's go to our angel. Everybody go down to verse 36. Uh, good stuff? Yes. Does everybody follow the, 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 uh, the Bible story? Now, that's a Bible story you've never heard, right? No. Have you ever heard that Bible story before? No. Like I said, in the new motion picture, Deacon will knock off everybody. <laughs> he's just got all the snakes out of Ireland, now he's getting them all out of Israel. Okay, ready? Let's do, do angel work. Now, because, which we're, and then we're going to flip into Jesus and the angels. That's why the Jews don't like him. How many got all this background? I want to give you all the background because it's some rich, rich background you never heard. Are you getting all this background, sister? Yes. All right now, everybody with me in verse 36. Mm -hmm. What, what, uh, 37, same chapter? 36. Chapter 37, 37, sir. Oh, verse 36. Oh, there it is. In the now. Sister, wow. we just did this last week. You missed a good session. Yeah. And the oh, angel goodness. of the Lord. Stop. In the name of love. The angel of the Lord. So who is it? Jesus. It's Jesus. When we have that expression, the angel, it's a theophany for Jesus coming. Look where we are. Now, how many people are coming in? This is scary. Where are we in Jerusalem? Now, may I make a suggestion? Maybe an astute observation. This is going to happen 
to the end of time. This past week on the Temple Mount, because of the Six Day War and everything, there were 260,000 Muslims on that top. Peter could not get up there. They would not lie him on with his B&H special. <laughs> Unless he had a sheik or a sheik or a shuk. <laughs> Remember where we stood for the presentation and everything else? Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I need to take you back up there to show you a few more things. And we will someday. Uh, now, are you getting this? Mm -hmm. Is it good? Yes. So now, put in there, we, we just did last week, the angel of the Lord. Do you remember that, sir? Mm -hmm. Okay. The angel of the Lord went forth and slew 185,000 in the camp. Sister, tell me. What? The hand of God. You got it. Now, what? 185,000. So here comes now. Here's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. When you, this actually really happened. Read tonight online or whatever what history says. You know what history says? It was the bubonic plague. I said, you've got to be kidding. I mean, that's a lot of rats. <laughs> Can you imagine yeah. for 185,000 guys surrounding this and all of a sudden all the rats came out? Mm -hmm. oh. I mean, and also all the rats had to be synchronized bites. <laughs> so you have 185,000 rats and the Lord had to say, bite them all together, go, then they dropped it. <laughs> I don't believe it happened like that, no. but read history, mm -hmm. read history, and I, I, for my whole life, I, I never, I, I always forgot to look it up, and that was the answer I got, the bubonic plague, I said, you've got yeah, really. to be kidding, I have never in my life heard that Israel had the bubonic plague, read it, read it, if you want to laugh, read, read the, see, see how much, uh, everybody got your, your research paper, your homework yeah. for next week? All right, now, you ready to go on? So everybody uh, circle that. The angel of the Lord wow. went forth, yeah. slew 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians, and when men arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead bodies. Mm -hmm. So here's Hezi and Isi, Isaiah and Hezekiah. The guys on the wall, they woke up in the morning, 185,000 people are dead. <coughs> Sister Marie. His own sons killed him then. Yeah. Then, part two. Part two, verse 37. Then Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and dwelt in Nineveh. All right, anybody ever heard of Nineveh before? Yes. Okay, that's Jonah. Now, by the way, just for your FYI, can I, can I tell you where Nineveh is? How many... Have anybody ever been following the news? You ever watch it? The word is you'll you you'll probably remember this as soon as I say. It. How do you say Nineveh today? Aleppo. Mm. And right now the Iraqis are trying to rebuild the tomb of Jonah that was buried there because when ISIS went in, they smashed all hopes, and, and when they found out Jonah the prophet was there, so they're trying to reconstruct and build again oh. where Jonah the prophet was. Wow. And maybe one day it'll be really safe, we can take a tour there. Mm. Okay, are, are you getting this? Yes. So, uh, now what happens to old um, Sennacherib, baby? Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed, went home and dwelt in Nineveh, and as he was worshipping in the house of Nishrach, his god, mm. Adremelech, and Sherezer, I mean, they had, they had to talk to each other, you know? And Sherezer, his son, slew him with the sword, escaped in the land of Ararat. What happened in Ararat? It was where the Ark of the Covenant, uh, where the boat was. How many remember Noah and the boat? And Asher had and his son reigned in his stead. So they killed him. 
because why? He was mocking God. 185,000 troops are dead. And so put in there, Jesus. So here comes the angels. Now, we just got about five minutes. I want to introduce us to, I, I had to get that angel story in. I thought it was really good. Do you think it was good? Yes, mm. it was awesome. Did you like that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Did you ever study that before? No. No, no we that haven't, have we? You know, I don't think ever in my life really I studied. Just I now I want to share with you Jesus and his angels. Okay, now but we do the angel of the Lord. I want to give you um, seven things where the angels were around Jesus, and then why are the angels so involved? Okay? Now First, I want us to go to, in these next five minutes, I want you to go to 1 Peter 1, 12. Was that good, sister? Okay. Who wrote Peter? Peter. Peter, there's another Peter feast today. He was called Peter the Exorcist. He was killed in the early 300s. He's in the first Eucharistic prayer next to Marcellinus. Marcellinus and Peter. He was called Peter the Exorcist. So Peter's, one of your sainted names is an exorcist. Was he a fisherman? No. Okay, everybody with me in, in Peter, Peter 1.12? Yes. We're going to go through the seven things that happened with Jesus and angels. We'll start and then we will continue. Amen? Amen. Is this good? Yes. Are you learning anything new? Yes. I want you to get fresh manna. You know, I've been doing with Sister Marie with this for over 30 years. Do you know we have never repeated one Bible study? No, never. This was beyond belief. And by the way, this is, this is beyond belief. By the way, nobody really studies this one. No. Everybody with me in First Peter 1 Peter 1.12? Mm -hmm. Now, Go with me to, um, everybody there? Yes. All right, we're, we're looking for angels. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at the life of Jesus now, and we're going to see the angels that surrounded him. Now, this is my embodiment. The angels are higher than us. Mm -hmm. But when we live a life in the Holy Spirit, they are blown away. I was using a Sister Mariaism. Because they, they go nuts when they watch us receive the Eucharist. Nuts. Because they realize that's Jesus, who they worshipped in eternity past. And, and the way we receive in our culottes. Amen. And, and, and I still saw them today. The claw. The claw knows. They should do a new Marvel movie, The Claw. Oh, and have them go to all the churches. <laughs> the <call. laughs> Verse 12. It was revealed to them, the prophets. They were not serving the, yet themselves, but you. I ran a line, but you there. The prophets saw down through the corridor of time and says, we got to tell you something. And do you know people who lived before us and knew we would come after tried to communicate with us? They tried to tell us something was coming. So what did they do? They put it in their little proverbial bottle and sent it across the seas of time, hoping that somebody would pick it up and tell the rest of the world it's coming. And most people upstairs have not picked it up yet. And here's, now you're picking it up, okay? Here's what they want to tell you. It was revealed in that, not serving themselves, but you, and the things which have been announced to you by those who preach the good news. Can I say good news? Evangelium. That the Holy Spirit sent from heaven things into which angels long to look. We're going to follow now the seven things that angels long to look. They had to be there. Because they were staring at this. Are you ready to go through this? Okay, is this good stuff? Yes. Yeah. So I'm giving you seven things that the angels longed to look at. And when they saw it, they just went, whoa. And when we look at it, we go, oh. 
not judging, just observing this. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? I'll give you the first. You want, you want one? Is this good? Yes. All right. Now, the, when the angel of the Lord came, the first one is this. And I'll give you all the scripture on it, and then we can read. Now, there, there, is, there are seven th This is so good. I don't know how you're going to sleep. I don't know how you're going to sleep at, at uh, Route 17 tomorrow. Just give us all seven. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Numero uno. The incarnation. Are they there? Yes. Yes. What did they do? They pronounced it and got super excited. And what were they doing? They... Six months before this happened, right? What Gabriel was dispatched. Right. <laughs> Came to Elisheva, Elizabeth. Right. Something had to be announced. Tell the world, he's coming! <laughs> and there had to be angels. Now, who got an angel visit? One, Mary. Yes. Right. Two, Joseph. Right. Three, the shepherd. And I got to do this for you soon. Dreams with Joseph. How many would like to go into the dreams of Joseph? Yes. yes. Into deep yes. mysticism in this Holy yes. Spirit. Would you like that special study? Yes. yes. I got so much. Wow. Sister Mary gives me topics and she tells me to do them all. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So those are the three that get hit Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds. Are you getting this? Yes. Then all of a sudden, <coughs> Joseph was in inner turmoil, Matthew 1 20. He was the first person that gave the whole world the name Jesus. Matthew 1 21. Who told him that? The angels. Angels warned him, Matthew 2 and 13. You remember that? Yes. And then, years later, the Joseph got a return visit from the angel in Egypt. Which one was that? What was the first? Matthew 2, 13. Oh. Matthew chapter 2. He gets a return visit from the angel. Now, you ready for this? When that angel came to him in Egypt, what did the Jews have leading them out of Egypt? Remember I told you, Exodus 23, is the first time we have guardian angels leading us out. What did Joseph have? Guardian angel leading Mary, Jesus. They were leading them out? The same thing. Good stuff? Good stuff. You, ready? you want another one? Yes. All right, Larry's not here yet. <laughs> now, another angel that makes an appearance. Number two, the temptation. Now first we have the devil, who was an angel, of course. Yes. He tempted Jesus three times, remember? The world, the flesh, and the devil, remember? Right. But I don't want to talk about him. I want to kick yeah. him in the teeth and smack him. Yes. In Christian life. Of course. Now I want you to go to a verse that is going to, when I tell you what the Greek means, it's going to blow your mind. Turn to the person next to you and say, get ready for this. Get ready for this. Get ready for this. is so incredible what the Greek means. Okay. I'm ready to do the happy dance okay. for UPS. Now. Are you ready for this? Yes. Now, I, want, I, want to show you two, I want to show you two Bible verses about Jesus and angels. Everybody, get out your sword. You got your sword ready? Go to Mark 1.13. Mark 1.13. I'm going to like study the Bible with little points we've missed along the way. Yes. Everybody, with you, everybody, if you're there, say amen. 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 You're there already, sister? Yes. Yeah. All right, everybody, in Mark 1. Mm -hmm. Go to verse 13. It was still under one, uh, under the first one. This is the second one. This is the second one. This is number two. And he was in the wilderness 40 days tempted by Satan. 
and is with the wild beasts. That's a whole preaching right there. God bless you. Now, angels ministered to him. Yes. All right, now, mm. everybody see that there? Yes. The angels came to Jesus. And now, may I suggest they're going to minister to us? Here's what the Greek means. This is really good. Turn to person, that's really good. It's really good. Are you getting this, sister? Mm -hmm. The Greek means that the angels. Now, he, he was just, what, starving. And so what does it mean, the Greek means? The Greek means the, the angels spread it out a table for him. Wow. What does it mean to minister? Let me give you another Bible verse and cross-reference. In 1 Kings 19 with Elijah, remember the angels came and gave him <coughs> something to eat? Mm -hmm. Now, here's what it means when angels minister. When angels minister to us, they lay out the table. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amen. And by the way, you know who had a, a lot of visitations of, of the power of God? Elizabeth Ann Seaton. She mm -hmm. trusted God. Things were really down. Knocks on the door would come in. Dinner. You know who do, does that, Father Groeschel's men? Yeah. And one last one, we're done. Go to Matthew 4. Who wrote Matthew? Matthew. You are very smart. <laughs> Matthew 4, 11. What's the definition? Matthew 4, 11. Still, now, this is still temptation? Yes. Oh, okay. Now this is, this is, please note, please note, this is after the temptation. Forgive me for saying this. You might go, oh, well, this is called angel food cake. <laughs> now, are you verse 11 there? 411? Yes. Look at verse 11. What does it say there about the angels? The devil left him, and behold, bum, 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 bum. Now, that's a strange behold. Behold, angels came and ministered to him. Plural. Angels. Angels. Angels came and ministered to him. So it's what does it mean? Sense. Now watch this. Let me tell you what spread out means. I'm running over time. But I haven't seen you in a hundred years, so. Yes. When you spread out. Ready? Sister Marie, you ready? This is good. When you spread out, Psalm 97 says, to spread out means to put things right in front of your enemies. <laughs> now, in these days we live in, there's going to be a banquet for all of us in the midst of our enemies. Psalm 23. Yes, also Psalm 23. So spread out, minister, is in the midst of of enemies. Good stuff? Yes. Who just left him? Satan. And, then the angel comes. and now when the, when the angels come, they're going to set up our banqueting table in the midst of our enemies. Because God's people are being delivered and saved. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon us, and we thank you for thy word and the angels. We thank you that, along the study, just to get to one angel story in the Old Testament, but the background was worth it. And thank you, Lord, for these angels. And we'll continue next week. You're going to have your mind blown because the angels that are around Jesus, then I'm going to be more specific. The angels around you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. Amen. 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 Amen.